YouTube, what is going on guys? It is George Tree, the Miracle Man, back bringing you another video and today we got a big one. We got three more Platinums in the Road to 1000 journey. We have another game that's going to be added to the Back to Plat series and of course we went for the challenge getting three Plats in just two days. Now the way I'm going to do this is rather than going through each game individually, I'm going to be going through how I got the trophies because I was working on all three of these games at the same time. The three Platinums I went for in this video were Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, and MLB 23 The Show, which at the time of recording the video that I'm doing, I was the fastest person to get the Platinum. That means that there was a total of 102 trophies. 54 of those which were bronze, 31 silver, 14 gold, and of course, our three platinum trophies. And at the time of this video, guys, there were 43 common trophies, 19 rare, 27 very rare, and 15 ultra rare, including our platinums. And percentage-wise, guys, MLB had a 0.1% completion rate at the time of recording this video. Resident Evil 2 had a 3.5 completion rate at the time of completing this video. And Resident Evil 3 had a 7.5% completion rate. And as always, guys, there's going to be a spoiler warning in effect. I'm going to be going through all three of these games, talking about the stories, the trophies, everything like that. So if you guys do not want any spoilers, this is your spoiler warning. And without further ado, let's jump into the first part of this three platinum journey. Emma? Sweetheart, I told you to stay put. I did already have a few trophies from the little bit of Resident Evil 2 that I tried to play back in the day. I did get a lot of trophies done in this game, guys, at the start for some reason. I made it out of the police station, but that's as far as I ever made it in this game. Surprisingly, going through the first part of this game, the only thing that was interesting about Resident Evil 2 was how scary it was. When I'm going through the RPD department, especially when Mr. X is stip stomping around, it's creepy. He can walk past the doors and like you can see him and he, you can hear him bursting open other doors. It is a very scary sight. But other than that, I didn't get any trophies in the RPD department. So I actually made it all the way to the Mr. X fight, the second fight, before I even got a single trophy. Where I got three trophies within quick succession of each other. I got the skeet shooting trophy where I had to shoot a zombie dog or liquor out of the air. I got the Bon Appetit trophy and I got the hats off trophy. The Bon Appetit trophy all I had to do was shoot a grenade that I fed to an enemy. And for the hats off trophy I just had to shoot off the tyrant's hat. The final trophy I got was the Escape the Police Station trophy that gave me the Never Ending Rain trophy. Now the next two trophies, people said that these were actually difficult, and I didn't actually find this that difficult. What made it stressful for me was Mr. X. The trophy here requires Ada to only use her EMF visualizer to complete Ada's gameplay segment. Jesus Christ, can almost... Say that there for a second. But the reason that this is so difficult is because you can't use your gun at all. And while she just has a pistol, avoiding the zombies isn't that big of a deal. I did die once because I cornered myself. But these zombies aren't too big of a deal. It's the Mr. X scene that is stressful as all hell. Because I ran around the room a few times to try and avoid him. It's close. It's close if you don't know what you're doing on the first time. So just be prepared for that. But I did get through that and did get both trophies for one slick super spy and the trophy for hack completed for just completing eight a segment. The next part of my platinum run took me down to the sewers where I had to defeat the stage two William G. Birkin using the crane only once. And the next trophy I got after that was just the trophy you get for escaping the sewers. So guys, we're at the point of the Resident Evil games now where I know how these Resident Evil games work. I know how most of them are going to be in terms of difficulty wise. So I was very ballsy on my first one with Resident Evil 2. I completed the game without using a recovery item. I took 14,000 or fewer steps. I completed Leon's story on standard or hardcore with an S rank. I got the trophy for completing Leon's story originally. And I got the trophy for completing Leon's story on the hardcore mode. 
as well as completing the trophy for defeating the Super Tyrant with just five minutes left until detonation. And I just can't get enough. I'm just a little bit caught in the middle. Life is a maze and love is a riddle. I don't know where to go. Can't do it alone. I try. Now it was at this point in the run that I started to notice that nobody had platinumed MLB yet and this is why I started getting trophies like uh, follow the hype train. I also got the trophy for striking out a batter using only one type of pitch. I also got the trophy to the moon where I had to hit a home run with five seconds of hang time. And then I also got the trophies like heart of the city, uh, looking good and practice makes perfect. And then the next one I got shortly after that was in the jukebox menu, play a new song from the jukebox. That's when I went to sell a diamond rarity card. I sold one of the pre-order ones that I got at the start just to get the trophy. If you love something, let it go. Just to get that trophy out of the way. Completing a program in Diamond Dynasty, acquiring a diamond level pitcher. And the final two trophies I got in this section of the MLB run were hitting a home run with your team's DH and winning a game within retro mode. So after I did all the MLB stuff, that took me to part two of my Resident Evil 2 run. She claims you're not FBI. Help me, Han. Why couldn't you just hand over the sample? Because I realized, as much as I wanted to trust you, I didn't where I would get my first trophy, Paralyze a Liquor's Sense of Hearing. This is not a hard trophy whatsoever. All you gotta do, launch a flashbang at a liquor and you'll get this trophy to pop. The next trophy that I got was when I went and pushed forward to the Sherry segment where Sherry actually gets trapped by this creepy, creepy Chief Irons. Chief Irons in this game, he's a whole nother bowl of fruit, let me tell you, because he is creepy. But I did get the trophy escaping the bedroom within 60 seconds and completing Sherry's segment. But it is a tense scene, guys, because let me tell you, in video games, and one thing that terrifies me, it's being chased by things that you can't see. And crazy thing is that that was actually the last trophy I got until all the way till the end of Claire's campaign, where I got the trophies for defeating Stage 4 G Birkin with four minutes left until detonation. And of course, guys, I got all the trophies at the end of the game to pop at the same time where I completed Claire's story on hardcore difficulty, completing Claire's story for the first time, completing Claire's story with an S rank. Make sure you're on standard or hardcore for that. It will not pop on assisted and witness the true ending of the game. And after that, guys, I went back to MLB. So I know we're jumping around back and forth between these two games, but let's jump back to MLB real quick. Let me get this straight. You're going to get a guy that's been released by half the organizations in professional baseball because he's got non-repairable nerve damage in his elbow. And he can't throw. He can't throw and he can't field. But what can he do? Oh, boy. Guys, check your reports or I'm going to point at Pete. He gets on, get on base. base. He gets on, get on base. So for part two of MLB, I really just focused on um, doing the, the grind heavy trophies. These were the trophies like completing all of the, um, the league challenge games where you have to play as all the black history uh, characters. And you'll also get the lead the way captain where you have to get the tier two ability with your captain. Then I jumped over to March to October where I got the trophy Future of the Franchise for drafting an amateur and I also finished both my yearly and contract goals for March to October. And at the same time in this mode, I also got my old school trophy for having a closing pitcher close two innings for the save. And then the final two things I had to do was make the postseason within March to October and achieve a five-star offseason within March to October. But now, guys, we are heading once again back to Resident Evil 2 to finish the Resident Evil 2 Platinum. So the final thing I had to do in the Resident Evil 2 Platinum was get the Zombie Roundup Trophy where I had to kill three enemies at once with a sub-weapon. 
But the um, don't need no stinking gun trophy I did get. And the next trophy I got was the Master of Unlocking trophy where I had to open all of the locks and safes in the game. After that, I did pick up my two film rolls where I had to go find my two hidden items for the Treasure Hunter trophy. And also at this point in the game, I got the trophy Another Survivor. Uh, Chasing Jill is the name of this trophy. This is the tie-in for Resident Evil 2 and 3 where there is actually a letter left behind by Jill in the gun shop. Then I made it all the way to the laboratory where I destroyed my final Mr. Raccoon and got my last inventory slot to max. And the final two trophies I got on the regular run was clear the game without opening the item box. Yeah, the, there's no complete the game without saving trophy. There is a complete the game without using the item box, which means you have to be really, really smart with how you use your reserves, at least in this game. I did do that, which means the last thing that I had to do was read all of the files, which I actually couldn't find one of the files, but it turns out it was just on this computer that I couldn't, it was at the end of the game in this computer that I couldn't read at first for some reason. So I did go do that, get that trophy to pop, and that means all I had left to do was the fourth survivor extra mode, which was where I played as Hunk. Th this challenge is not the di most difficult thing in the world, but it is definitely stressful and can be very stressful, so just make sure you guys are keeping an eye out for that. But after that, guys, I did get the first of three Platinums for getting the Resident Evil 2 Platinum Raccoon City Native. Let's go, there it is, baby. Platinum. For Resident Evil 2. There it is. To come back. Let's go. I wanted to meet the Grim Reaper. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Alright, guys. That's the platinum. That is the end of a Resident Evil 2 platinum. And by far, guys, Resident Evil 2, the atmosphere of it, the gameplay, just everything about it. These, this was just an incredible experience. It's horrifying. Mr. X is terrifying. It is just an absolute joy of a game. For the story, guys, the Resident Evil 2 is going to get a 10 out of 10. And for the Platinum, it's going to get a 9 out of 10. I only had to do one extra run after the main two runs that I would have had to do anyway. So... This game gets a 9 out of 10 for the Platinum, 10 out of 10 for the story. But other than that, guys, that is it for Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2 is just horrifying. It's scary. Even with the rocket launcher, there were moments where I didn't even feel safe. And it's just a scary game, guys. It's fun. It's fantastic. And it's definitely the best Resident Evil game I've played to date. And without further ado, guys, we're going to be jumping over now to the next game in the saga, Resident Evil 3. But first, I have to jump back into MLB for a couple of trophies that we got before we jump into Resident Evil 3. So let's do that first. The best way that I can describe MLB 23's Platinum is easy. MLB's Platinum is ridiculously easy. Grab it and go get this Platinum if you guys are trophy hunters because this game is so easy to Platinum. Before I forget guys, I give this trophy a 10 out of 10 
on the Platinum. There isn't a story to this game, so I don't have anything to give the story, but the Platinum, it's easy. There's no tedious trophies. It's a fun game. It's it's great, guys. Let's go have some fun with MLB. Play some baseball. If you guys are trophy hunters, have some fun with baseball for a little bit. It's not difficult, and you'll get the trophy champion of the diamond. But let's jump into our final Platinum now, Resident Evil 3. On October 1st, Raccoon City will be completely destroyed in a missile strike. All residents capable of rational thought are urged to evacuate immediately. This is not a test. Come on! Next time, take the fucking hit! Good riddance. Now this is where the back to plat comes into play, guys, because I did already have a ton of trophies for Resident Evil 3 because I did do a full run of Resident Evil 3 when it originally came out back in the day. For 17 of the 33 trophies, so it does qualify for the back to plat. But without further ado, guys, there was only one. That's right, one run I had to do in Resident Evil 3 total. One. Another, the first trophy I got was the Power Stone trophy where you had to place all the jewels in the Clock Tower Monument. Then after that, I didn't get any more trophies until the very end of the game where I unlocked all the safes, lockers, strong boxes, and pickable locks with Jill, collected all the weapons in the campaign, and then also got the electric slide trophy where when Nikolai is around there fucking with us, I had to get all the fuses in the warehouse within five minutes. The next trophy I got after that was the bookworm trophy where I had to read all story files. And this one is not difficult. There's a lot less trophies in this game. This game honestly is very, very short. So now guys, I just had to finish the game. Like literally all I had to do was finish the game. And I know that sounds really, really stupid, but that is all I had to do. Actually, I, that, that's a lie. I did have to do the destroy all the Charlie dolls. So I did have to do that. So I did get the trophy for that. But after that, I literally got, let's see, let me count these real quick. I literally got nine trophies to pop at the same time, which is by far the quickest I've ever platinumed a game. Just to let you guys know, the quickest game I've probably ever platinumed is the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. It took me about a total of seven hours to do all three games. Um, it was not difficult. I did it as soon as the game came out. I started this game at 3.32 p.m. and finished at 10 p.m. So this game took me a total of seven hours, about six and a half. So they're very, very close to one another. They are very close. But I got all nine of the trophies to pop. Um, it's the trophy sprinter for completing the game under two hours of play time. The one or fewer recovery items, the minimalist, the completing game on S rank. That's for both Inferno and regular. Uh, complete the game on Inferno, complete the game on Nightmare or Higher, Hardcore, Standard, and the Platinum. But without further ado, guys, let's jump right into this final Platinum. Once again, I apologize for the quietness in these Platinum videos. So if I seem a little tired in my speaking or a little bit jumbled with my words, that is why I've literally been up for 50 hours straight. So um, bear with me on that, guys. Please, just bear with me on that. platinum before they gave me everything else what the fuck what a weird oh no i guess they just gave me the two. Oh, they just gave me the one and then every other one just stacks all right guys that is the end of re3 let's get back to the video and let's wrap things up the best way that i can describe resident evil 3 is easy it's extremely easy even the hardest difficulty it's just easy with the rocket launcher it just makes things easy but even without the rocket launcher i feel like this game wouldn't be that much of a hassle 
if you had the grenade launcher, the assault rifle, infinite ammo, anything else, it really wouldn't matter because this game is extremely easy. There's a reason that this platinum is the only platinum that is a very rare out of any of the games that I've done on my channel at the time of recording the video. I think the only one that came close was SpongeBob Cosmic Shake. But since starting YouTube, this is definitely the easiest platinum I've gotten. And it's definitely the least rare platinum that I've gotten. But I have to give the story on this game. I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. And that comes down to just, I played the original Resident Evil 3. That's why I played this game when it first came out. And I can just echo what everybody else has said, you know. This is a fantastic remaster visually. But from a gameplay perspective, they cut a lot of things from this game compared to the PlayStation 1 version. They cut a lot of it. To the point where the later Nemesis fights, I just, I barely recognize them. I just, I can't even recognize them anymore. Um... It, the Nemesis looks okay. I think the older Nemesis looks more um, iconic. And I think that's why people are not happy with the new design. I think the new design is fine. Um, I think he's very creepy. But I do think that the older design is better as well. So the story does get a 7 out of 10, guys. They cut a lot of things. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's right there with RE0, guys. There's no substance in this game, I feel like, compared to the other Resident Evils. And it really shows when I only had to play the game once to get the Platinum. One time. But without further ado, guys, the Platinum gets 10 out of 10, though. I'll tell you guys, it's easy. <laughs> there's no hard trophies. There's collectibles and stuff, but it's not hard. There was just only one run that I had to do. And... That's just incredible. I'm getting really, really good at these Resident Evil games. So I just, I cannot wait to jump into the next Resident Evil game, which is a game I've never played before. And that is Resident Evil Code Veronica X. That is the next Resident Evil game in the franchise. I cannot wait to play that game. I've never touched it. And then after that, guys, it's the Resident Evil 4 Remake. We're going to be jumping into that and platinuming that. After that, guys, I am going to be taking a short break from the Resident Evil side of things. That's right before Revelation. So for those of you guys who are wondering, we got Revelations, then uh, Resident Evil 5, then uh, Resident Evil 6, then Revelations 2, then Resident Evil 7, and Resident Evil 8. That's six Resident Evil games left. That's half of the Resident Evil games. The reason I am taking a break after... Resident Evil 4 is because I'm going to do a I Platinum all of Star Wars series. Jedi Survivor comes out April 28th. So I want to have Jedi Fallen Order done and platinumed for the second time. So I have it fresh in my mind when I go play Jedi Survivor. And I will be doing the Star Wars games after that. There is 13 of them, guys. So it's going to be absolutely insane. But the plan is... To finish all those Star Wars games extremely quickly. Because they're not going to be too difficult. They're fun games. The only Lego game I'm doing is Skywalker Saga. The other Lego games I'm going to be throwing into a Lego video that I'm planning on doing at some point. But So don't expect Force Awakens or Lego Star Wars 3 in there. But I will be platinuming every single Star Wars game. And then I'll come back do the other six Resident Evil games. And then once that's done... We're going to be jumping back into our backlog, meaning we're going to be doing Ghost of Tsushima, and then we're going to be jumping into Horizon 1 and Horizon 2. And then after that, guys, I got some big things coming, some big franchises coming, some beefy boys. But we will uh, talk about those when we get there. But that's going to pretty much be the end of this video, guys. I did complete my goal. Sorry, like I said, if this video was a little jumbled around. I have been awake for 52 hours straight. So I'm going to go take a nap now, and I'm going to sleep for a long, long time. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, it has been an absolute blast. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys hit that like, comment, subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you guys get notified every time a new video goes live on this channel. If you guys want to see me do more videos like this where I just get a ton of Platinums quickly, like I know I've seen people do, can you get 30 Platinums in 30 days? I don't know if I have the time constraints to do that yet, but we will see. If you guys want me to do that, I'm more than willing to go for it. But this was the best that I could do with my two days off. I did three Platinums in two days. Two Resident Evil and one being the fastest to Platinum it at the time of recording the video. So I think that's pretty good for a video, guys. And as always, guys, this was your boy, The Miracle Man. And remember, if you're not playing the game for the Platinum, you're playing the game wrong.
Peace.